you're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. And when he took his teeth out, it's actually better. It's called a gum job, I believe. That it is, yes. Oh, hello. Uh, welcome to Chewing the Cuds. Uh, ready for this week? I, I, I'm barely ready. Barely? Barely. I've, 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 I've rinsed through. How long have you been doing this for? Well, I've rinsed through. That's an update from normal. Right, OK. Uh, and exactly what have you got for us today? Um, apart from a wiffy crutch. Um, well, I have a story about an adult star who's making money in an unusual way. And then we have something a little bit magical in that science that is. Ooh, OK. Uh, and we also will have a game to play in our game of the week. But on screen now, you should see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as the names of people have dropped us a line going on the bottom of the screen, we go over to Mist and the Showbiz. OK, so, I'm quite giddy and excited. What's in this coffee? I don't know. There, there were sugar, sugars, weren't they? I don't know. Mm, well, I, I'm, I'm excited, because okay. this first news story combines two of my favourite things. Drag, I, okay. I like a lot of drag, and uh, Doctor Who! Uh, OK. Uh, you look dubious. Be careful. Why? I don't do spoilers for Doctor Who. We're already aware that there's a new uh, series coming out with Shooty Gatwa, and we're all very excited. We'll all see the trailers, mm -hmm. and we've already oh, no, seen... I haven't seen any trailers. That's a spoiler. <sighs> You're not going to like this next bit. I've warned you. OK, well, close, close your eyes and close your ears, and the rest of us, y you at home and me, we're, we're, we're going to have a bit of fun. In the new series, Jinx Monsoon is going to be playing one of the villains. Oh, I could see you fuming already. So now when I see Jinx Monsoon on the screen, I instantly know that that's going to be a bad person. But which bad person? Doesn't matter, because I now know that Jinx Monsoon is playing a bad person in Doctor Who. So when they come on screen, if they're being nice to a child and not punching a puppy in the face, I still know they're a bad person. You've spoiled that, Doctor Who. I haven't spoiled it. You just told me about well, it. Well, Russell Davis has spoiled it. Well, it's him that's told I'm just... Don't shoot the messenger. Always shoot the messenger, because you can't find the out messenger. the information if the messenger's shot. I'm innocent in all of this. Are you, Al? This is, this is well-publicised news. The bit that is news about it, because everybody knows this, so it's not a spoiler. The name of the character has been suggested. Not revealed, suggested. And apparently the character is going to be called... Maestro. Okay. Now, what is Maestro Italian for? F off. We may have a new master. Now, I'm not too sure whether this is a suggestion uh, to put us off the scent, and I'm not too sure whether Jinx Monsoon really will be playing a new version of the master. Um, lots of people are saying that this is probably a misdirect from the man himself. But, yes, they will be appearing in an episode, the second episode, on the 11th of May, called The Devil's Chord. And to really drive them mad, it's going to be a semi-musical episode featuring the Beatles. I'm going to flip this f***ing table. <laughs> he kept going. Well, it's my job. No Doctor Who spoilers. That's the one rule. You can say waffle if you want just no spoilers some of us can enjoy doctor who for how it's presented not being upset about what's been presented there's a reason people have trailers it's to get you excited about what might come I'm excited about what might come i don't know what might come it's the element of surprise which you have there's, just robbed from me. I've not robbed you, you from it stolen some I have of not my robbed joy. You. I've not robbed you of a you thing you have you've stolen some of my joy Moving on. OK. What's next? Let's go and see who wins this next thing. Let's do something a little bit more. Uh, your speed. A teen romance. Teen romance. Teen romance. Teen romance. Teen romance. Teen romance. Young love. Oh, I thought it's a teen romance. Right? No, we're not talking about those videos you that's Google on X hamster. That's, much, yeah, much that, that's a whole speed. different thing. Do you remember Sebastian Croft, who was in Heartstopper? Who is it he played? 
He was playing, playing the bully. He's not in it anymore. He's left. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's gone on to... Is it Ben, the bully was called? I think, yes, if I remember correctly. He's gone on to do another project. It's going to be on Prime Video. Okay. And it's called How to Date Billy Walsh. All right. And apparently it's all about a love triangle. Ooh. Seems from the synopsis to be a heterosexual one. Um, but, <laughs> yeah... <laughs> a heterosexual. Yeah, heterosexual. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cultural appropriation there as well, are they? <laughs> <laughs> when I came out, my dad couldn't say the word homosexual and he would say the word homosexual. He couldn't say it. Physically or emotionally? Just, just both. It just, he, no, just couldn't. he emotionally couldn't put the word together or he no, just wasn't able to. It just say sounded it. like. So, whilst I was going through probably one of the most crisis points of my life, I was laughing my tits off because he couldn't say the word. Um, my dad couldn't say the word either, but I think that's because he chose the words. I'm not going to repeat them. Yeah, words. no. Um, but yeah, I can't say the word heterosexual, apparently. So, uh, heterosexual. Um, anyway. He plays uh, somebody called Archie, a plucky, hapless teen who has a big secret. <sighs> not that, not that big. No. Uh, he's in love with his childhood school friend, Amelia. Oh. Problem is, Amelia is fawning over Billy, a brawny new pupil. Okay. Why, why are pupils brawny? I don't know. But yeah. <coughs> there he is. And, and that's, that's the show. Um... Apparently, Sebastian, in reflecting on this story, has uh, given a bit of romantic advice. Okay. Yeah, if anything helps, and if you ever get into a, a love triangle, it'd be nice for me to just get the one partner, uh, let alone you two. You love line. <sighs> what? You want a love line rather than I, a love triangle. <laughs> yeah, could just, just a dot. A dot on the I'd page. I'd like a love circle. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I know what kind of circle you'd like. Anyway, Sebastian says... The advice I give, he'd probably not be able to take himself. Yeah. Uh, but he thinks you have to be really honest and strong, he advised. Put your heart out there and say how you feel. And if it hurts, you move on. It's better than being stuck in a not knowing situation. I'd like to say bollocks. Utter, utter bollocks. I thought Don't tell somebody how you feel about them. Otherwise, they walk off on you on New Year's Eve and leave you crying in the rain. Um, that's happened to me twice. Uh... Maybe don't tell them on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Well, you get pissed. New Year's Day, you tell people that you love them. Mm, well, that's if they've come home with you that night and they ain't. Anyway. Never had that problem. Yeah. Always come on with me. I'm just a sad wanker who goes home and enjoys a box of Kleenex. Kleenex? <sighs> well, well, you know, <laughs> if you are your own lover, you ought to treat yourself. The balm one. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> sticky residue behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, one last story for you. There's a new movie, well, it's, it's out already, called Monkey Man. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember Dev Patel yes, from Dev Skins? Patel. I am aware and, of him. Yeah, yeah. Um, Slumdog Millionaire they did quite well out of as well, didn't they? Well, they're in this new movie. I've seen the trailer and it, it oh, it looks so kick-ass. Like, really kind like action. Like kick-ass. It's action. Okay. It's it's got that flavour, and I think the plot. I think the. What are you giggling for? When you said action, my brain went like the stuff you're not getting. <laughs> so mean to me. I'm going to leave and never do this show again. No, um, it's an action film. It seems to have this revenge plot going all through it, and it's very much a film about the underdog, or so Dev Patel says. Um, the main protagonist that he plays is a character called Kid. And he joins a group of trans and gender non-conforming characters to fight the elite that's oppressing them. Okay. Um, basically, it's all very much set in um, India and the community over there. Have you ever heard of the Hijra community? No. Okay, so it's in in the trans debate is very Western centered and and very bonkers about it being some mad new thing. In other cultures. Trans and uh, gender nonconformity oh, is a long it's established a, it's thing. It's the third gender. It's the third yeah. gender. And they have a community, they have cultures, they have um, 
like pastimes and, and ways of being like it's an established group in in the society it's not some new mad thing that some writer of a children's fiction book needs to get a knickers and a twist about um so when making this film they really wanted to make sure that the hij I do I do apologise for not pronouncing this properly properly the hijra community um, is a society of insects trans and other third gender groups who live across South Asia. They are largely removed from the wider society, but they have existed for more than two thousand years. And Dev Patel, um, this has been their director uh, directorial debut, I believe. Um, has made sure that they're part of this film. Good. Uh, he sums it up by saying, we should be fighting for one another, not against one another. For me, it has become rigid over time. When you look at the old carvings and these temples in India, the freedom, the sexuality, all of it, the philosophy was so ahead of its time. I wanted to dive into it and make that the law of the film. And I can't wait to see it. Not just because, yes, right on with all of that, but it just looks like an amazing... Like, the action sequences look stunning. Really genuinely stunning. So, uh, yeah, that's out in cinemas now. Go watch Monkey Man. And that's all for the showbiz this week. Thanks for that, Mist. Always nice to know that there's a Monkey Man not doing spoilers about one of my favourite TV shows. You're welcome. So stick around. Next, it's Mike in the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's go deep into the somewhat poorly lit web as it's Mike and the Buzz. What have you got for us? Are we doing Crafty Queens again this week? No, we're not doing Crafty Queens. What, can you make out a bit of old sacking? Um, this is a designer top, thank you very much. I look quite sexy. And this might be why guys don't try and chat me up. <laughs> I didn't say that. But yes. Um, toilet habits. Yes. Do you have any particular quirks when using the lavatory? No. I, no. I just use the I'm not like one of those people... You know, people have poo knives and things. Or, or, or bits of paper. knives? Have you never heard of a poo knife? What's a poo knife? Like when people have like a little butter knife next to their toilet to scrape away any, you know, little chunky bits after they've been... Yeah. From from where? From the basin. Oh, right, not from you. I just think you... <laughs> jabbing it! That's not clever! Uh, no, there are there are people that do that. It's really weird. I mean, I've heard the phrase, everything's still if you're brave enough, but... Well, it's only a butter knife. It's not like, yeah. But anyway, um, and then people who use um, uh, rags for tissue paper so they can wash it again and things like that. Okay. So I know of some weird toilet toilet ads, but uh, the toilet habits. But no, not okay. me. Well, this is a, a lady who has basically turned around and said, "We need to save on our water bill." Mm -hmm. So has brought out a rule for her partner that you only flush after number twos. Oh, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, wash it down. Uh huh. I know that rule. Yeah, um, and it's had some some interesting responses on the internet. Things like flush the toilet, you did. Yeah. Um, does your toilet not stink? And he actually is answer going, yes, it does. Especially it would. In warmer months as well. Ooh. Oh no. Oh no. Step one. See, I even make sure I put the lid down when I flush because you obviously be. when you flush, it all. And that can get in your toothbrush. I don't understand why people's toilets are in their bathrooms, if you get what I mean. If well, you're sink... If you have a toilet in the living room, it causes a bit of a conversation starter, but... Well, I have a bath in my bedroom. Yes, we know. Yeah. Because you live in the 1970s porn. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have a bath in my bedroom. But I, I do think the toilet itself should be a separate room, not, not, not your bathroom. OK. Because flushy, flushy... And just germs generally, anyway, yeah. See, I, I think a toilet should be in the same room as the shower. Because when you're having a rinse through, it's just, it's there. Yeah, OK. I don't poop in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, anyway, um, so are you pro or con this? Con, 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 con. I, I get the principle, and I, I'm all for ecology and saving water. But no. 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 Flush. If you want to save water, you could have one of those toilets that's got the wash basin in the top. 
So you wash your hands and then the water goes into the top of the the um, toilet. So when you flush it uses that water. So I've seen ones this. where they'll have um, fish bowls in the cisterns. That's quite cool. That's going to be a bit of a problem when you flush the toilet and the fish goes down the <laughs> toilet. Oh, look, it's a pretty little girl. Oh, shit. They are designed to not flush the fish. So how is that ecologically sound? I'm not saying it's ecologically sound. I'm saying it's pretty. What I was explaining was an ecologically sound idea because it reuses the water. Well, you know. Grey water usage. Moving on. Pregnancies. Mm-hmm. Do you know anyone at the moment that's pregnant? No, and don't cast any aspersions. I wasn't. Don't like the flowers. <laughs> um, so this is uh, news about a stingray called Charlotte. Do -do 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 -do. Stingray. Stingray. Do -do 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 -do. Somebody's older than they look. Stingray? You're not older than you look. <laughs> oh, that's mean. <laughs> that's so mean. I'm only 29. Doubled. Um, but <laughs> this is Charlotte Stingray, okay, who has people got a bit worried about because she'd gone missing. Charlotte the Stingray's gone missing. She's, she's, she's back. She had gone missing, right? Okay. But she's um, special to a lot of people because she is a pregnant virgin Stingray. An immaculate conception. Yes. Um, there she is. Jesus has touched, well, no, God has touched the Stingray. Mm hmm. Oh. It looks like a really badly made pancake. Stingrays do. That's what they look like when they're not killing Steve Irwin. Or, as you are a Doctor Who fan, uh -huh. Lady Cassandra. Yes. Only they have a top side that's not the same as the back side. Mm. There was that time where she was talking out of a. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but let's see a floop. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, why did we blur this bit out? We can't be sexualising animals on this show. We're not sexualising, we're pointing out the floop. But, so where are they, they, they if that's the floop... Yeah. Is that, is, uh, that, how many that do they pouch. have at a time? Is it like a multiple birth or one Absolutely. at a time? But yeah. Um, so if the Ryan said it is possible because none of the men that were in the tank with her are able to reproduce with her because of their size. Oh, are they big boys? No, they're small boys. Oh. Little boys. Um, I just had an image of her on a sofa with, with five big stingrays standing moment. behind her. Do you need a moment? <laughs> I got a very jealous thought then. Uh-huh. It's almost like you're on a train suddenly. Um, uh -huh. I'm never going to live that down. No, you're not. Uh, but it's called parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis? OK, which is where they can basically reproduce themselves. Okay, it can happen with some, some insects as well. Mm -hmm. But linking into Doctor Who, that is also how the adipose are reproduced through uh, parthenogenesis. Ooh. I thought that was quite cool. Um, I've not watched that episode yet. He spoiled it for me. You've not watched an episode that's like 10 years old? <laughs> the first one with Donna Noble in. As an I know, one. I'm teasing you. It's been out for a while. That's your own fault. This isn't a teaser of something that not yet happened. Anyway, if you want to interact with us on social media and not say anything about Doctor Who, because it's not been on yet, it's at the Could TV on social media. I'm ignoring you mouthing the plate to watch it. Right. Um, that brings us nice to our story of the week. And this is a story about um, a TV presenter who's been bludgeoned to death by a <laughs> chewing the cud mug. Um, this is a story about a lady called Belle Daphine. Belle, that is a name. It is. She's an adult worker, shall we say. Oh. On the internet. Oh. <laughs> um, who rose to fame in just pre-pandemic because she was selling her bath water, right, um, for £50 a bottle. Mm -hmm. in, in, and as she said, to dirty old men, right? Well, yeah. Right? Um, she was making lots of money out of it, so she was quite happy to send them a bath water. Well, it harm, it, as long as it's not harming anyone, I mean, fill your boots or your bath. Or drink it. Um... Are they drinking I it? No. Are they? Oh, I don't know. Are they are they drinking it? She didn't care. Are they, they rubbing rubbing themselves? They were giving her it? money for bath water that she'd let down the drain. So, and did she actually do it? Is it been certified, or is she just running the tap and passing it over to her? No, because it's it's not clear water. It's quite clearly had person in it. But yeah, um, but she's come up with a new money making scheme. 
Oh, this is not her first. No, no, no. That, that, the the bathwater was her first thing. Well, so, I think OnlyFans was probably her first thing. No, that's the second thing. Oh. She realised that people were paying for her bathwater. She went, oh, I can do sexy, sexy too. Ooh. Right. She has um, commissioned a company to make a very special limited edition exactly in her likeness sex doll. So she is now a sex doll you can purchase and have rumpy pumpy sexy time with. Well, again, as long as it doesn't harm anyone, I mean... I don't think it's like going to take over the world. Mm. <laughs> it's like, give me your money or I'll chuck your cock off. Anyway, it's, it's just a sex doll. Whatever people like, really. But I thought it was a brilliant way of, of saying, you know, people have been, can watch me and they can now interact with me as well. All power to her, I say. Yeah. Um, I'm being asked in the gallery if it's waterproof and where you can buy one from. I think gallery might have some questions to uh, answer with their partner. <laughs> the partner's involved. Um, so, so Belle Delphine, um, she's a gamer girl as well, and that's her, her very aesthetic. So she comes on playing mm -hmm. Xbox and stuff and then plays with her Xbox. Um, and I think all power to her. Yeah. yeah. It helps that she's not a completely unattractive young lady. Well, if, if that's what you find attractive, uh, you, the the lady bit is the bit that is a turn off for me. Okay. Um, well, but... you don't have to motorboat. You can still find her attractive as a as a human being. Um, it's like I like I, I like the architecture all... of Anthony Gaudi. Yeah, but because they're going to start humping the Sagrada Familia. I don't like the Xbox control she's holding. Well, because it's pink. Is that is that the uh, is that the line in the sand for you? The, the, the not having an outie is a problem for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Both lying face down, pilgrim, what you're waiting for. Well, that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, for that mental image. Yeah. What? Hurry up, then. Oh, stick around, if, if you dare, because coming up, we have a game to play in our game of the week. Welcome back. And yes, you are watching Chewing the Cud. We're going to play Ooza Kazoo. And this one is for you, Mike. It says something funny on the auto cue. <sighs> Game of the Week. All right, then, Mike. You famously tell me I'm rubbish at playing the kazoo, and you're right. So show me how it's done. <laughs> See, it's piss easy. It's really not. You it's hum magic. into a plastic tube. You're playing the magic kazoo. That, that's why you can play it. Crack pipe. Um, so, all you do is you go, la, 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 stick this in your face, and you go, mm -hmm. that's all that happens. It's just you try and play it like a flute. Anyway. It, it's, it's a mystery to me. Anyway, the game. The game. Are you ready? You're going to play a tune, I'm gonna play and a tune. I'm going to guess what that tune is. I'm going to try to guess it right. Okay. Oof. Are you ready? <laughs> um, can you give me a clue? It's quite modern. Modern. It's quite popular on social media for doing a dance challenge right now. Oh. And it's got the got a woo in it. Oh, 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 I think I, I, is it also famous on TikTok at the moment because it's also been famous in a film recently? Maybe. Would it be Murder on the Dance Floor? No. No? no? No. Oh. It was Texas Hold'em by Beyonce. Oh. I, I'm just, you say oh. Texas. Woo! Yeah, I, I don't really know Beyonce very well. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, okay, give me another one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
You look like you're having a whale of a time. I am doing it. It's a great tune. Um, c can I have a uh, guest from the gallery, please? Not a clue. No, no. Well, they uh, won't get it because it's not been in the hit parade. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not going to get it either. I'm sorry. Like this, this one's. Still, I'm, I'm, I'm usually good at this. Uh huh. That's what he said. It's Little Bootang or Little Bootang by Paul Russell. You're my little boot thing. I don't care. Give a damn what you do. Say, girl, I know that one. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think I've really listened to the charts since 1998. Okay. Next one then. I'm just not trendy. We know. I'm classic, matured. One refined. of those words is correct. So One like of those it. words is correct. Right. Um. Lady in Red by Chris no. Berg. You're going to hate yourself. <sighs> Give me some context. It starts with one. One thing. One. One thing. Starts with one thing. Play it again. <laughs> and then there's some person singing. They keep singing. And then the person goes... <laughs> And some more words. And we keep waiting. And the person goes. <laughs> While it's filming so two words. And then it goes to the chorus. <laughs> but in the end, it doesn't even matter. In the end, it doesn't even matter. Of course. Yes. You even gave me the title of it. Like this. I'm aware. I was there at the time. I know. I'm ashamed of myself as a player, as a fan of rock music, as, as somebody who enjoyed actual music at the turn of the century. <laughs> I ask for forgiveness. <laughs> the theme tune to Mr. Ben. Since you've been gone. I'm wearing a school tie. It's not the theme tune to Grange Hill. I, I'm Canadian. I'm a girl. I'm wearing a school tie. It's the early 2000s. Oh, Avril Lavigne. It was Avril Lavigne. Lav yeah. Avril Lavigne. Lavigne. Yeah. And? Uh, Skater Boy. Yes. That was a little bit after my time. Yeah, but... Mm, a little bit I after your time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 the, the best song of all time! It was my theme tune for a while, so you better get this right. It was my theme tune for a while. I used to go to rock clubs with people that would all point at me and dance to it, and not actually in an offensive way, in a, yay, you're, you're all gay kind of a way. Um, it, uh, Nancy Boy, Placebo. Yes. One of the best songs of that time. And I went... I went to a very good rock club, one I really enjoyed um, in Manchester, um, uh, called uh, Satan's Hollow. Yes, I know it well. Very much enjoyed my night there. I went up to the, it was a, a, a choose a song night, so uh -huh. you go up to the DJ and say, I'd like a song. I went up, I asked for Nancy Boy by Placebo, and he pointed to the entire crowd and said, look around. There's not a single person here who was born <laughs> when that came out. Jog on. I was mortified. Absolutely mortified. I felt like a very sad old man yeah. who had no right to be in a nightclub. Yeah. They used to play it at Poptastic oh. in the rocks on the rock lounge. Oh, such a good song. When me and my mate David were there, they'd, we'd walk in and it'd, they'd always play it because I used to go eight because mm. it was my song. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's a song about being a prostitute. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so Why we found, we we found the it? level. We found the level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alanis Morissette. <laughs> and? Ironic. Yes! Yeah, we found my level. <laughs> and for those people that are watching the show that aren't as old as Mist, um, just have a quick Google search and go, right, okay. These are iconic songs. If you don't know them, I do suggest you go home and Google search and stop being an uncultured job. This is history. But remembering Lincoln Park. Look, I'm old. Dementia has set in. Okay. Let's you're, you're mocking the afflicted. <laughs> You know when you play this bazoo, can you not look like you're smoking a pipe in an no, old-timey movie have, from the 1950s? I used to smoke a pipe. You can tell. Yeah, I, and it was the thing was it was in college as well because I was in the, I was in the pub right, and it's about when you could smoke inside pubs, kids, right? And I realised that if I had a pipe, I could get more nicotine inside me while while drinking a vodka tonic than if I was smoking cigarettes. You you were just being one of those. It's a bit like the guy who turns up to the party with a guitar. No, no, no. The thing was, you I, were trying to be all all in, trendy and interesting. I, I was wearing double denim. And a lot of glitter and smoking a pipe because it's the best way of getting a nicotine hit. Right. Um, did you get the song? No, no. I was, was too. I was too amused by the the vision of you and and uh, you look like Popeye. He had good arms. I'm all right with that. Right. <laughs> or cancer. You've got very strong forearms as well. It's true. Nice no, swap hands. I'm not stupid. Um, yeah, he doesn't use both at the same time. I, he's not that, but he's not been that um, endowed. I do, just not on my own. <laughs> you wouldn't know that, Mist, because it's been over two years. It's not been listen. over two years. It's been over a year. Closer to two. And besides, that one night there were, the, I made up for it. There were many at a time. Was it more than 12? Oh, yes, it was. How many? <laughs> it really was. How many are we talking? Um, you know, I said you should go to Gran Canaria. You really I should, should go, to Gran, go to Gran Canaria. Yeah. Are you in that, that porno with the... Anyway, um, probably is the answer. That was Nick Crave and Kylie Minogue, The Wild Rose. Oh, brilliant song. It was. It'd be lovely if you'd actually played it. I did. I... Yeah, there's a good reason. <laughs> I, it's, it's fine. That's enough for that, I think. Um, stick around as next. It's Mike, and that's science, that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we learn something we did not need to know. It's Mike in that science, that is. Because it's the same every week. That science, that is. What do you know about indicators of, of fluids? Um, damp patches on trousers when I've not been able to get to the bathroom quick enough. Or you sneeze too hard. <laughs> I'm not that um, old yet, thank you very much. Maybe maybe talk to the gallery about that thing. Oh, but, the, uh, yes, Dean not me. has already told me the virtues of an adult nappy. <laughs> um, just for the confidence, he says. <laughs> so, what we're going to do Oh, is to... body foam! Sorry. <laughs> no, it's not for beards, it's for poos. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to use an indicating fluid that will tell us whether something is an alkaline or base or an acid. Alkaline, base or acid? Oh, base! Is that what this is? Yes. Snort it if you want. Please don't <laughs> snort it. Um, base is another way of saying alkaline. Okay. Okay. So, what we're going to use is we're going to use the lovely red cabbage. I, I do like a bit of red cabbage. Okay. Because what, what you can do is once you've cooked your red cabbage on the Sunday roast or however you want mm -hmm. it, right, you can then use the fluid to do these tests. Yes. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just pop the white powder to one side. Mm -hmm. um, is you've got a glass with some very hot water, so be very careful. It's very hot. Oh, it is a bit warm. It's very hot. Okay. That's a lovely glass for a toddy. 
Mm, it is. Um, what I wanted to do, I wanted to get the red cabbage and cut it up into small pieces into the hot water because that's going to basically break up the surface area in the cells that will release the, the, the um, indicator. So are we talking teeny tiny? Or? It doesn't really matter. The smaller you make it, the more you get. Okay. So it's just about... I have used red cabbage, not for experiments like this, but doing... Um, I've, I've used it for like doing dyes and stuff because you get some beautiful red liquid out of this after you've cooked some red cabbage. You do. And it makes a nice base for wine. Cabbage wine. Mmm. I shall I, sh I shall get you some well, once I make it, I'll make get you some pea pod wine. <laughs> I'm getting very, very firm in it. Do not touch it from the, the gallery. The, ga the gallery um have had some of my homemade <laughs> wine. Yeah. One <laughs> one of them got these? very drunk and had to be carried out of my house because they were drinking it like pop. Oh Paul then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um Oh, you what? want loads in there? Well, what a fair amount, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, some people may or may not be aware. I have a distiller's license Ooh. because we all learnt new skills in the pandemic, um, and mine was useful. While you were all making banana bread, I was learning how to make actual spirits. Um, so, if you do bring me some of this, what what the gallery is referring to as benzene wine, <laughs> I can make it stronger. Oh, well, the last batch that um, one of our gallery members tried was that strong even they, like, put the glass down because it was basically paint stripper. Yeah. So I do make very strong wine. That's good. But, yeah, I can then distill it. I, can, I, I did a, um, a home brew of um, coffee vodka. Ooh, that was, does sound nice. It was very lovely, but also 90% proof. Oh. <laughs> 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 but I, I will I will trade you um I've got some apple wine ready in a barrel to be decanted. Oh, Calvados. And I will also try to be making some pea pod wine. That's if the snails and and, and little bits and grim things slugs eat all my peas again like they did last year. Yeah. I just Oh, isn't that a gorgeous color? Lovely purpley color. Oh, is, that is actually gorgeous. Give it a stir. You should have you should have enough in there now. Oh. I love that colour. That's beautiful. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to let that steep. Mm-hmm. Okay. For a... <laughs> I got very excited. You can tell that from Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. um, oh, steep in a brew. Now, on your plate, you have a white powder. Yes, I do. Okay. It's bringing me back... <laughs> giving me back uh, flashbacks from the 90s. It's ketamine. And what we're going to do is we're going to see whether ketamine is alkaline or acid. Alkali, not acid. Yeah, we're not really. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to carefully transfer mm -hmm. the white powder onto a piece of tissue. Oh, oh, like right. we used to do bombs. I like used to do what? Uh, don't ask. <laughs> okay, and then pop the tissue on the... On the so, so somebody had a very misspent use. The next thing that we want, on, a, on another piece of paper on the plate. Another yeah. piece of paper on the plate, yes. Yeah, we're going to put some of this stuff here. Oh, that looks like mango chutney. Give it a sniff. I bet it's not mango chutney, is it? Give it a smell. What does it smell like? It smells a bit like mango chutney. Okay, it's not. So on your plate right Actually, now... Actually, it smells you... like HP sauce. Okay. So on your plate right now, you should have a tissue with white powder on it. Oh, you want the tissue with white right, powder on the plate? three pieces of tissue on this plate. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. So can you see how I've got mine laid out? Okay. Okay, because we're then going to put a third one here. Okay. Okay, and I will be pouring a purple liquid in the middle of it and watch it expand. Ooh. Okay. Oh, okay. We're doing some... We're, we're, we're being all technical. Okay, Chromatography, yes. that's called. Mm. Um, so take some of this this ready, what you're calling chutney. Yeah. Right, and just pour a little, pour a little bit onto your tissue. Just okay. a little tiny drop. We don't need a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's actually um, menstrual fluid. What? You just, you just done there. Um, so thank it's you what? to my sister who de um, donated her moon cup this year, this month. Um, I thought you said earlier it was food grade. Well, you can eat period blood. It's not period blood. Um, then you should have a little, little, 
little other ramekin with some fluid in it. What, what's this? This um, morning's wank? No, this is a very watery wank. Well, I've, I've heard rumours. <laughs> like oh, that's paper oh, paper. that's vinegar. It is vinegar. Yeah, well done you. And then um, you're just going to moisten your teeth. Actually, it smells a little bit like that home brewed wine. So, well, you can actually make vinegar from wine. So, just yes, want to again moisten the tissue. You don't need a lot. You need a little. Yep. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is when we pour in our, our indicator into the middle, mm -hmm. it's going to touch these things. And it's going to change colour from this lovely purple to different colours, mm -hmm. depending on the acidity level. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just pour a little bit carefully because you're wearing white. Um, pour some of this indicator fluid mm -hmm. into the middle. Oh, you're dribbling down the side. Oh, yeah, I'm not an amateur. Ooh. Oh. How I go. This is getting all very damp. Yes. So now what you should see is you should see the colour of the tissue changing. <laughs> so <laughs> I've done it very differently to you by accident. I shouldn't have been paying attention. What have you done? Um, they're, they're not folded with a little triangle in the middle. Okay, so they're all bleeding into each other. Yes, they are a little bit, yes. Okay, so um, what we have here yep. is we have um, the purple of the main colour that's, that's running out. Yep. Um, we've then got the acid, which has gone red. Yeah, a little okay. bit, yeah. The alkaline, which has gone blue. Yep. Yeah. And then this stuff over here, right, which is kind of both. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the reason why that's both is that's tomato ketchup, which contains a lot of sugar, a lot of um, vinegar. That's ketchup. That's ketchup, but watered down. Oh, okay. Because um, otherwise you'd be glooping a blue, blue ketchup. Okay. Um, and so it doesn't, the sugar stops some of the reaction happening, which is why you've got purpley bits. You're pouring the vinegar directly onto the bicarbonate, aren't you? No. Okay. No. Just checking. No. Um, but yeah, that happens, oh. and then it will change back if you reintroduce some liquid. So onto my um, alkaline, mm -hmm. if I pour some acid on, It'll fizz up a little bit, but it'll change red because I put too much on. Ooh, let's try that. Oh, it went proper fizzy. Proper fizzy, yeah. Oh, that's much more fun. But yeah, and it changes to red. Ooh, it does. Yeah. Oh, aren't you clever? Ah, that's not just clever. That's science, that is. Ah. Cheers. Science, that is. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel like I want fish and chips now. Okay. It's the, it's the smell of vinegar. That's the smell, it's the smell of vinegar that makes you want fish and chips. Mm, yeah, I, I think that's what I'm going to have for my tea. Mm. <laughs> anyway, what was the point of this experiment other than pretty colours? Testing things. Just testing. Yeah, because that science, that is, is apparently shonky. <laughs> It is a bit shonky. But that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on social media at The Could TV in all the usual places. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. See, this is the fun one you can do then. Oh, it's all red. <laughs> okay, that is kind of cool. Yeah. I'll give you that.